Hey guys, it's me, James here, and today, basically, I'm just gonna be making a video on basically the basics of deep Vulcan. So let's get started. Keep in mind, deep Vulcan is a game where if you die in the depths, you will have to restart your character and you will wipe. As you can see here, I died to a Sharko and had to restart my character. Don't get mad when this happens, it is a part of the game. So when you spawn in, you will have your character, you will give it, uh, be given a random race, and uh, you have different race variants, so you can pick whatever you want. You have your name, so you can just pick a random name. I went for uh, Zot Zeshi, I don't know why, don't care. And then you have your faces, you can do a mark if you like. Uh, then you have your, ba your starting weapons. So... What I recommend for new players is to use the medium weapon, but what I'm going to do for my build is use the heavy weapon. And now you have your magic. So as you can see here, it says shadow cast. You will not have this unlocked when you start, uh, but you will have all the other four. But what I recommend to use is flame. It's best for new players. Now you have your starting stats. This you can just put into whatever you like. doesn't really matter. I just put mine into agility and fortitude. And now you have your boons and flaws. Now these don't really matter, but what I recommend for new players is autodidact and obvious. But yeah, now you have your origins. Now origins, these are a little bit confusing. You will learn about these on a later time, but when you spawn in, you'll only have Etrus and Isle Vigils. So what I recommend for new players is to spawn at Etria. So this is what it's gonna look like when you spawn in. You're gonna wanna talk to this guy. Uh, ask him that and then say can you spare him some cash and he'll give you instantly 25 notes So we are going to uh, gonna want to do is go down here. You're gonna go to the blacksmith You're going to go through here. You're going to talk to this guy Don't say, say I won't want rat you out buy some cloth and you're gonna talk to the blacksmith craft and You're gonna select the armor of your type or whatever you want and then craft and now you have some starter armor now, this right here is the bookstore. Now, it's kind of useless in the beginning since you won't be needing this training equipment, but he sells you how to make friends book and math textbooks so you can increase your intelligence. Now, in the center of Arisia, you have this guy. Uh, he will give you golden ring if you spam one, which you can sell for notes. Now, this over here is the mantra shop, which you can uh, A, modify your mantras and get mantra trainings, so, or two mid trainers. So Shadowcast, Herf Gem, uh, Gale, all that, all that stuff. Now this is the weaponry here where you can buy weapons of your class. So if you want to get a heavy weapon, uh, you will require some stats. You want to get a medium, it will also require stats. And there's not many light weapons in here, but that is, um, it doesn't really matter. Now going uh, down from the left side, you can find yourself at this food shop, which will be really useful because you will need to buy food uh, because food in this game is very important. Uh, if you go into here, you can get flint and uh, wood and you can also buy campfires and pickaxes. This is only really useful if you wanna just start fires and all that stuff. Now going down here, this is the guild house. Now guild houses basically allow you to make your own guild or faction. Now, I'm in my own faction, as you can see at the top right, you have all these different people's guilds. Uh, I'm not in that one. And then you can see at the bottom, this guy who is not in one. And then you have me, who's in my, me and my friend's guild. And then that's how it works. So if you want to talk to this guy, you can leave or create your own guild. Now, going from there, you can go down this way instead, and you can find yourself at a bank or this other food shop, but that doesn't really matter. You go past, and you'll find yourself here. Now we're gonna, gonna, uh, going to want to do is talk to this guy and he will give you an axe. Just say yeah, and you'll obtain an axe which you can use to cut down wood and start campfires. Now going here, this is the anti-crane. He will give you training equipment so you can train your stats and you can also sell stuff. So I can see, sell the golden ring. Now I got my money. Now, what, uh, now you can buy different training equipments and what I bought was the ankle weights so I can train my agility. Now, going out from there, you can head out of Etrus and go down here, down this bridge, and you will enter the uh, Etrian Wilds, which is basically 
Uh, just a smaller location of Exorus. Nothing too special. So, if you go down here uh, and just keep going, don't mind these guys, just some random people. You will encounter random people and they might try and gank you. If they do, just leave before you get in player combat. So, going um, down here, uh, you can go through this cave. And going down through this cave, through this bridge, and all that, that's a navigation cap. I don't know why I'm talking about that, it does not really matter. But going down through here, you can just slide, jump down, and you will find yourself at the Etrus Docks, which basically allows you to uh, get a boat, there's water here, uh, fishing equipment, and all that type of stuff. So now going into the Etrus docks, you can talk to this NPC who basically is like your shipyard. You can build stronger and better boats, but you'll be pretty much stuck with the dinghy in the beginning of the game. So that's free, spawn it in, and yeah, you have your boat. Now I'm going to speed this part up, but try and keep up if you can. Basically, steering in this game is a little weird. Uh, you can press Q or hold Q to direct because in this game... Steering is hard, trust me. You'll be swerving left and right. If you hold Q, you will go in a straight direction and it will line itself up. So what you're gonna go to do is find that statue and take a left. And you're gonna wanna go through there and then you will end up at the first starter island, which is like the first like real experience with PVE in this game, so which is called Lower Arisia. So what you're gonna wanna do is just leave your boat, doesn't really matter. You're gonna wanna go through here and take a left. Now this is going to be your first real PvE experience. Now, this might be a little difficult because these are light weapons. These are called mud skippers. They use their hands and yeah, just be careful. You might die, probably will. So in this game, the PvE system works like this. You can parry by pressing F while they swing. I know as you see, I'm failing horribly. You can also block, but that gives posture. So as you can see, parried, swing, Swing, lock, parry. I, I don't know what the fuck I'm doing in this clip, but basically, you get the uh, just parry as soon as they swing on you. Well, not as soon, but try and time it to the point where when they hit you, you press F so you can parry their attacks and then you can start swinging. So, as you can see here, they aren't dead, but they are downed. So, in the way this game works, if you press B, you will start an execution and you will kill them. Just like that, you can press V to hold them. Now, the way the progression system works in this game is you have like different training equipment. Now you can see five investment points, and then you see, so I spec into my heavy weapons, now it went down to a four. So, when I spec into other stuff, like, I don't know, let's see, I'm doing a voiceover, just kinda wait. Uh, so I spec into flame charm, spec into agility, so I get my agility up. Put on my uh, training vest so I can try and get my fortitude up. And then I just try and kill you guys. So I'm going to speed this part up just because it's a little boring. So as you can see here, I roll and I power it up. Now, that's how the progressive system works. So when you use all five of your investment points, you'll get a power up and you'll go up in power. So you'll be power two. So usually it's you. It's not guaranteed you'll get whispers, which is basically your ability to get fire mantras. Not fire mantras, whatever mantra or attunement you picked. So I picked flame. I got a fire mantra called fire blade. And there's other options like mystery mantra, which you get a random fire mantra, or you can roll two. And roll two is basically you roll two different talents, but it's RNG. So this is what it looks like when you um, when you power up and don't get whispers. Instead, you get talents. Now, oh yeah, another thing. When you complete events, you will get a small chest. Depending on what event, you might get a good loot or a really horrible loot like I did. So when you power up, you'll get these five usually five cards now five cards is not bad but each talent has their own different things so you can see critical attack something about posture and health 
And then all these other things, they all do different things and they're all RNG and you see like time to go, moving fortress, block is, uh, is not slow. Now the thing I will say, get engaged. If you see this, get engaged. So the way this works in mantras is you have your mantra. Your mantra takes ether. To regenerate ether, you need reservoir. Without reservoir, you can't regen ether. Without ether, you can't use your fire mantras. But with engage, every M1, you get, you know, you get ether back. So you can continuously use your mantras. Now, following up the trail, you can find yourself at this event. Now, this guy was already here killing the bandits and bandit captain. Uh, basically, when you kill them, you will be able to get a, uh, a decent chest. Nothing too crazy. Uh, sorry, my mic cut out, but I'm back now. So, following the path, you will find this place, which doesn't really have a location name, but everyone just calls it Bandit Cap, uh, Camp. Basically, the only NPCs that will spawn here are Bandit Captains. Now, these are really intimidating NPCs. You'll probably want to bring a friend if along, because these guys will parry, they'll faint, and a faint is basically, you pretend to swing. Yep, just like that. Basically, these guys are hard to fight, but not for me, because, you know, I'm an experienced player, trying to teach all of you. But, you know, bring a friend, and this game will be a lot easier. Now, you won't get any rewards or any, like, loot from these guys, but you will get XP. Now, a thing you will want to do is, since you, you ha will have to recover your food and hunger, if you get these green mushrooms and these brown mushrooms called brown caps and dentophilios, and you sit in your campfire, and you put them in your crab bar, you can create mushroom soup, which will restore your food and uh, thirst all pretty well. So, yeah, just a small tip. Now, going through here, this is, I kind of cut off everything, but it doesn't matter. You will find this place one day. This is called the Viper's Jaw. Now, the Viper's Jaw is the first place where you'll encounter your, like, first real mini boss. Now, this is called a Sharko. They have a move set, which is easy to master, but I would not recommend finding this until you're at least power 30. So, you can see, I'm finding it. I'm just going to speed it up because it's going to take a while. As you can see, I'm almost dead here, but I clutch it up with the last M1. I heal up. Now, same thing with the bandit cap. Uh, you will not get any rewards. Maybe like a small drop from them, but that is about it. And it's really good for XP because you can get your weapon up and your magic. Now, as you can see here, I was just normally progressing. And when you power up, there's a small chance you will get these things called legendary. Now, legendary talents are sometimes good, sometimes bad. If you see a dev take that, it's really good. Basically, two times XP. Now, legendaries will have green things behind the card, and rares will have red behind them. Now, some legendaries are good, some are bad. Now, here is my first death encounter, and I will show you something. So, you can see I got kicked by the Sharko. Bumped me. So, notice how... Go back a couple of seconds. Now, notice how my health was like pure orange now see how it's just a kind of gross disgusting musty orange that means i'm on one life but if you power up while in this disgusting musty one life you will go back to green health which basically means you're on two lives again and yeah that's just yeah now when you die on one life you will be sent to this place called the depths now the depths think of it as like the hell of deep Vulcan. Except you, you can escape. Basically, you can escape this place. But enemies like jellyfish, shar the sharkos, and a lot of other terrifying mobs will spawn here. So as you can see, I spawned in Seltor's Waste. Now don't freak out when you see these jellyfish. Let them zap you. But as soon as they do, just keep spamming M1. Don't move around as much. You will kill them eventually. Now, to escape this place, I really recommend you stay on the wall. You're going to want to look for this huge city. Now, stay on the wall and you will find this place. This right here is called the District of Comments. And you know you'll be in the right place is when you find a like slope in front. Now, in my server, the gate wasn't open. But trust me, uh, it is like almost guaranteed that your server will have that gate open. So what I had to do was I had to climb on the walls. 
to uh, go through just so I can get to that centerpiece. You want to get to that centerpiece. Now, when you get into it, as you can see, I've gone over it. You want to go into the cathedral. Now, the cathedral will have an elevator. And the elevator is basically how you escape the depths. Because the depths, it's like, it's the lower. It's the water. It's like you sinking into the hell. Now, to escape, depending on your level, you may or may not have to fight something. If you're 12, like, four, level 14 and above, you most certainly will have to fight something. Now, but see, as you can see, I'm power 1 here, so I'm going to speed it up. Basically, I can escape for free. Don't get started by the dialogue. It's pretty creepy, but just don't mind it. So as you can see, at the end of the dialogue, I get out for free because I am a low level. You will do this battle thing and you will get out for free. And when you escape the depths, you will spawn back at wherever you say you spawn, so that could be Isle of Vigils or Etrus. Hey guys, thank you for staying till the end of this video. It means a lot when you guys do that. Uh, this has just been a quick tutorial on how to play Deep Woken for the newer players, because as you can tell, a lot of new players are coming in because of the Layer 2 updates and Deep Woken winning best new experience. But yeah, uh, I'm close to hitting 150 subscribers, so if you could hit and like, uh, hit the like button and subscribe, that would mean the world to me. Have a good night, have a good day, it does not matter to me. See y'all in the next video.